Hey guys, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me. You are the top manager at one of the big oil companies tasked with leading your enterprise into the future without oil. You try to squeeze the last drop from oil fields around the world to gather resources to invest in various oil replacement technologies. While you may try to emerge from the coming crisis by regular means, your competitors likely will not, forcing you to dirty your hands as well. Peak Oil, released in 2017, designed by Tobias Gourbant, published by Two Tomatoes for two to five players with a playtime of 45 to 75 minutes. So join me as we do a quick setup and playthrough of this uh, Kickstarter game from 2017, Peak Oil. Hey guys, welcome back to a three player setup of the game Peak Oil. So before we begin, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the different cards and components before describing exactly how the game gets set up and laid out. So to begin, we're gonna have a stack of oil field cards and oil field cards are gonna look a little something like, uh, let's see, like this, there we go. And they indicate a destination on the board. You're gonna have um, oil barrels. You're gonna have a headquarters card. Looks like this. Headquarter cards have black backs. Then you're going to also have uh, private portfolio cards. There we go. It, also with a reference card on the back. Pawns for your headquarter. The different, um, let's see, we've got PR cards or PR crisis cards. We've got consultants up there. We've got our tokens, the small tokens that are dual sided that you're going to place randomly all across the board. The large ones go in their indicated spots as well. And we've got the startups down here, the different startup technologies. So that's all the setups, or that's all the components of Peak Oil. So let's begin setting the game up. So you're gonna take the player board, set it out into the middle where everyone can see it and reach it. Then you're gonna randomly distribute the large round refinery chips. That's these guys here. They're dual sided, so you just kinda of wanna shuffle them up off uh, you know, off table, I guess, and just randomly pull them out, put them in their large uh, circle locations, either side that you randomly pull. Next, you're gonna take the eight smaller chips. Uh, these are your risk chips. Same thing, they're dual sided, so just grab them and randomly place them throughout the board. The instruction manual uh, indicates that you want to remove this particular dual sided one if it's your first turn. If not, you can leave this one in. Next, you're gonna shuffle the oil field cards. That's these guys here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna reveal one for each player that's uh, in the game. We've already revealed that, and we revealed the Gulf region, Nigeria, and Libya. Once you reveal these three cards, or however many players are in the game, so if there's four, you're gonna take four. If there's five, you're gonna take five. Then you're gonna take two, uh, oil drums, two black oil drums, and put them on those three locations, and then return those cards to the bottom of the deck. Then you're going to draw out, uh, again, the number of players, uh, oil field cards, and place them next to that draw pile. So after that initial setup, sorry, you're only going to draw out three uh, new ones into the play area, not the number of players, just three. Next, you wanna shuffle the startup cards and then reveal them, uh, reveal three and place them kinda of next to the oil field cards. And the startup cards are gonna look a little something like this guy here. KOK Industries, lead you into the future. And then it also has a technology down here. So these you're gonna to wanna to take pull three out randomly, and then set the uh, rest off to the side. Next, each player is gonna take a headquarters card or an HQ card. This is uh, whatever one you wanna choose, whichever one you like the best. It kinda corresponds to your color. So I randomly drew yellow, purple, and green for the playboard, so I've got Platypus Petroleum, 
And then here's a couple others that did not make it into this particular game. They're all equal, so there's nothing distinguishing them from one another other than their name and their color. So just pick the one you like the most. Take any unused ones and just put them into the box. They won't be used during the game. Next, you're going to take a private, um, a private portfolio card and shuffle them and randomly deal them face down to the players, which we've already done around the table for all three people. So what that looks like on the reverse side is something like this, a private portfolio. Now this is different for each player. Any unused ones, again, return them to the box. Next, we're gonna create a general reserve. That's gonna be our kind of area up here to the upper left. And what we're gonna add there is we're gonna take two of our agents of our corresponding color and put them down here in our headquarter. So your headquarter is gonna be your kind of general personal play area, or if you had a tableau, it would be down here. So each player takes two agents of their color, putting it into their uh, region. Uh, next, you're going to take the other two agents and put them in the general play area or the general reserve up top. Next, each player is going to take one black barrel and also put it into their HQ. Once that's done, take the security chips, which are these guys all the way up here, these black chips. You're going to put those also into the general reserve. Next. You're going to put a number of red, yellow, and black barrels corresponding to the number of players. So it's here on the board, but it's also in the uh, instructions. So for a two-player game, you're going to do two red and two yellow and 18 black barrels. In a three-player game that we've set up here, we're going to do three red, three yellow, and 20 black barrels, and they go into the black bag here. Now for space purposes, I'm going to keep the black bag kind of off camera until we need to dig in and use it. In a four player game, again, it's four red, four yellow, and 22 black. And in a five player game, five and five and 25. One thing to note, in a two and three player game specifically, there are cards throughout the deck and do this, I guess, before doing your oil fields down here or your corporations um, over here, which, as you see, I didn't do a very good job of doing, but we'll worry about that later. Anyway, you're going to have cards that have this little kind of two black dots, or th sorry, three black dots and two uh, kind of crossed out dots. You're going to take all of those cards for a two or three player game and remove them to the box. In a four player and a five player game, they would stay. So in this setup, I need to actually draw, redraw these two cards as an example, because I failed to pull them out of the initial startups. So let's go ahead and just grab those. I think I took the others out. Those are two that I pre-drew before doing that. So anyway, make sure to remove the cards that have that icon in a two and three player game. But once you've got your oil barrels in the black bag, uh, coming up to the kind of final pieces of setup. Up top, these are going to be your consultant cards. For the consultants, you want to shuffle them up and draw out the number indicated on the player board. Again, down here, I know it's a little tough to see, but in a three-player game, you're going to draw out three level one consultants, two level two consultants, and two level three consultants. In a four-player game, it would be four, three, two, and in a five-player game, it would be five, four, three. Take those consultants and put them face up in an area where everyone can easily see them, read them, uh, pick them up, etc. Um, lastly is going to be your uh, PR crisis cards. You're going to separate those into three stacks by their levels. So the PR crisis cards are indicated, let's see here, here's an example of, well, sorry, here's an example of one of those consultants that didn't make it into this game, Pirate Negotiator, when Taking a shipping action, you may ignore all skull symbols on risk chips. So anything that doesn't get used, you're going to return it to the box. Next are going to be these uh, crisis cards. So we've got our level 1, level 2, level 3 crisis cards indicated in yellow, orange, and red. I'll draw one up so that you guys can get an idea of what a crisis looks like. These do have negative victory points on them. Public scrutiny. You may not spend security chips. Uh, you may not spend security chips and take a shipping action on the same turn. 
So these guys you're going to put up here in the play area face down into three separate stacks. And that's it. That's the components and setup of Peak Oil. So we'll go over the actions in just a moment and also the different iconography on the cards, but a lot to do in that initial setup. So that's how you kind of uh, go through and get the board and the table laid out for all the players that are going to be playing. So now that you've got the game set up, how do you play? Well, the turn order is one, two, and an optional third step. You take the turns clockwise, clockwise starting with the first player and you're gonna take your turn in two steps and you must take both steps in that exact order. For step one, you can reassign an agent or take an action. In step two, you may only reassign an agent. You cannot do anything else and it is not optional. You must reassign an agent in your step two. And that's your turn order. As a step three, which is an optional kind of third turn that you can take, you can, reass uh, you can pay two barrels from your headquarters to reassign an additional agent. So that's your turn order. Step one, reassign or take an action. Step two, reassign. And step three, you may reassign again at the cost of two barrels. So understanding that order, if you don't take an action on your first step, then you do not take an action on your turn at all. And sorry guys, one more caveat in a three player game is that in the, uh, the black market and the technologies, um, you're not gonna be using one of them. So you're gonna take um, one of your hydrogen cell technology cards and you're actually gonna cover up the hydrogen cell space because it's not gonna be used in a three player game. So you're only gonna have access to the four technologies in a two or three player game. Additionally, in a three player game, you're going to not use Venezuela. So take one of the oil field cards for Venezuela and go ahead and cover up that region because it's not going to be used in a three player game. In a four or five player game, you would have left the board as is. In a three player game, we need to cover those two things up. Okay, so now that we've got those corrections out of the way, back to the turn order. Step one, reassign or take an action. Step two, reassign an agent. And step three, optionally reassign. But what does that look like? How do you take an action? How do you reassign agents? Well, to reassign an agent, you're basically going to take one of the agents from your HQ and then put them in a location on the board. So when reassigning an agent, you can put them in any of the action locations on the board. That's going to be down here in these four spots at the bottom. Those actions are expand, develop, invest, and gray ops. When you go to the expand, so let's say I reassign my agent to the expand here, you're going to recruit an additional agent, so you're going to take it from the general supply. Develop, you're going to drill in a region, so you're going to add crude barrels from the bag to the oil field um, or whitewash it to get rid of those PR crises. Invest, buy a startup from the open display or inflate the perceived value of a technology and then the gray ops. Close the deal with one of the consultants who give you special abilities and access to the black market. So a couple of things to note though when reassigning an agent. You can only take your agent either from your HQ into an action spot or from an action spot to another action spot, but you may not say pick them up and put them back down in the same location mm -hmm. Or if you're taking another reassign, you couldn't say move them from gray apps to invest and then back here. So you can only reassign one agent on your turn, not the same agent. So they would have to be different agents. So if I'm doing to do, say, example, in my step one, a reassign, and then my step two, you must reassign. So I'm going to put him, say, here. And then lastly, you can't move an agent to a destination or to an action spot that already has five agents there. So if you know there was here and then there was one more out there, for example, there can only be a maximum of five agents in each action location. So that's your action of reass or sorry, that's the um, reassign an agent turn. But let's say you wanted to take an action instead on that step one only. When you take that action, you can take an action on a spot where you already have agents present from a previous round. 
So in my first turn, or any turn for that matter, if I don't have any agents here on actions, I can't move a guy there because again, that's my step one. So I've reassigned an agent to my invest, but then I can't do the action because in my step two, I have to put another guy there. So I can only take an action where I've already got people in their locations. So when taking an action of a location that you're on, it's majority controlling of that action spot. So if you have the majority on an action spot, so in this example, I've got the majority on the develop spot, uh, that means I've got more than anyone else there. Uh, I can take uh, the action of that location and I can actually use both options there. So on this one for develop, it says that I can either drill or whitewash. If there's a tie for control, so let's say there was two and two on the develop and I went to trigger the action, uh, I can still take the actions, but I then have to draw a barrel from the bag. So if I've done that, I then have to draw the barrel and then resolve the effect uh, of that barrel, black, yellow, and red. And then I may only do one of the two actions if it's a tied control. If I don't have majority, and I'm not tied for control, so I'm the minority in the uh, area, I cannot take an action in that location. So you have to have at least tying or ruling control of any action spot in order to do that action. So let's say I was tied for control, then I had to draw from the bag. If I drew a black barrel from the bag, then I'm going to place the first one that I pulled onto an empty black market spot that I choose. And the black market, as we know, is uh, over on the right side. So here, 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 and here. Not uh, the technologies, but the, uh, the skulls for the black market. A red barrel uh, means that I have to suffer a PR crisis. I'll go over that in just a moment. And I have to uh, pull, an, I can pull an additional barrel if I've pulled a red one first. So once I pull, say, a red one out of the bag, then I would go up here and resolve a PR crisis. And if I so choose, I can try to pull another one, hoping maybe for a black one or something else. Uh, and then at the end of my turn, if I pull the red one, I'm gonna put all the red barrels back into the bag. The yellow barrels work exactly like the red barrels, but the only difference is that I'm gonna discard the yellow barrel instead of returning it to the bag. So assuming you've then drawn a red from the bag, you suffer a PR crisis. And how the PR crisis works is that uh, first you're gonna suffer a PR crisis and you have to do two things when that happens. If it's your first PR crisis this turn, you're gonna discard half of the black barrels in your uh, HQ, in your headquarter, rounded down. So in my HQ, if I had say three uh, oil barrels, I would have to discard one. If I had four, then I would discard two. If I have two, I discard one. Next, I gotta get a uh, PR crisis card. So if I already have a PR crisis card in my HQ, uh, then I'm gonna flip it face up and its effects and its penalties now apply. To get rid of a PR, you, uh, you can do the whitewash action and that's how you then flip it back down. But if I don't have any uh, PR crisis cards in my HQ, then I'm gonna draw one of the next higher level you do not yet have and place it face down in your HQ. So example, if it's my first one, I discard half of my barrels, round it down, and then I'm gonna grab a, a level one PR crisis. Once I grab that crisis, it goes face down into my, uh, my HQ. So I'm not gonna need to resolve any effects because it's gonna go into my HQ face down. Next time a PR crisis happens, then that gets flipped up. But as you have to take the next higher level of what you already have in your uh, HQ, for example, if I had a level one face up because I never uh, whitewashed it, then the next time a PR crisis happens, I would draw a level two PR crisis into my HQ face down. Then the next time it happens, it'll go face up. But if I've already got say a one, two, and a three in my HQ, then the next highest again is a three. So if I've got a three showing face up, then I have to, uh, if I have to resolve another PR crisis, I have to then grab another level three. And then any black barrels that I've drawn from the bag would then go into the black market spaces indicated here. 
In a normal game, there's going to be five, but in a four, or no, sorry, in a three or two player game, there's only those four. So if I drew, say, a black barrel, I would put it over any of these, and then once all get covered, so one, two, three, four get covered, then you must take them and evenly distribute them out. So there's Russia, Gulf, Nigeria, and Libya. So I would then put those four barrels uh, out onto the, the different regions evenly. So let's go ahead and go over the different actions that you can do on your step one of your turn. In this first spot, expand. There's two options here, recruit and dispatch. Recruit is very simply, uh, if you want to do that action, you're going to take one of the um, uh, agents from the general reserve and put it into your HQ. So let's say, oops, the board were like this, I would take uh, this option, I would grab one of my pawns or my agents from up there and put them into my HQ. Uh, if I want to do the dispatch uh, action of this um, expand slot, then I'm going to move all my agents from the expand spot into another action spot, and then I can immediately do that action uh, with the same rules applying or leave them there for future use. So if I wanted to do, say, dispatch here, I could move, grab them from this side and move them over here to invest and then immediately do the invest option. So that's the, uh, the expand spot. The next one is develop, which is drill or whitewash. The action one of develop, drill. I can then, uh, if I want to do that action, I can take one of the three oil field cards, uh, as indicated right here, uh, and put it face up into my HQ. If I've got an oil field that has this symbol in the upper right hand corner, then I can also take a security chip from the general supply. So let's say I took uh, Libya as an example. I would put bring this down into my HQ. I would take a security token, and then I would also resolve any black barrels that are on the card. So for each full barrel, I'm gonna actually go into the black bag and take out one black barrel from the bag and place it on that region. In this one, it doesn't count as pulling. So I'm actually pulling out um, a black barrel very specifically. I'm not randomly grabbing a potential red one to resolve a PR crisis. Then if there's a barrel with a question mark, I can pull one uh, additional barrel from the bag and then place all black barrels I pulled on the indicated regions and resolve the PR crisis. So you'll notice if I were to take Libya on my first one, I would grab a black one from the bag. Very specifically a black one, uh, nothing is happening, I'm putting it onto uh, Libya. But if I choose to do the question mark option, which is an option, I may pull one barrel from the bag. And that use of the word pull is very specific because here if I pull a red or a, um, a yellow, then I must resolve a PR crisis. And then we would resolve uh, or pull up the next oil field card and put it into its spot. The option two for the whitewash is that I can discard one of my face up PR crisis cards from my HQ. So what I'm gonna do is if that uh, were the case, I'm gonna pay the number of barrels uh, from my HQ and then remove those barrels from the game. Level one are free, level two crisis, level two PR crisis costs uh, one barrel and level three crisis costs two barrels. So you can always discard your kind of negative victory point cards, those PR crises, by paying oil. Okay, next is going to be the invest uh, spot here. And for that one, we're going to do startups or technologies. So the startups, I can buy one of the three startup cards from the open display. So that's these guys right here. Each cost as many barrels from my HQ as there are barrels on the corresponding technologies. So example, right now there are no barrels uh, on the technologies to start. So if I were to invest early on, the cost would be free. And the option two is the technologies option, where I can place a barrel from my HQ onto one of the technologies um, that are up there. Um, and anytime you spend a technology, it, you're gonna actually discard it from the game. So if I'm taking a barrel, say, to pay the cost um, for startups, those go out of the game. When I'm investing the technologies to put it on there, I'm gonna put it on the technology spot. 
But as the game goes on, the technologies are going to get more expensive, especially as the oil continues to dry up. But those, uh, those startups that you've invested in will be worth victory points at the end of the game. And then lastly is our gray ops action. Uh, so the, for this one, you're gonna have black market and consultants. So for the black market option, I can move all the barrels that are on the black market uh, from their uh, slots onto their technology spaces. So I can move, um, so as we go back, if we say, for example, um, had to distribute the black market barrels out onto the uh, oil fields and they go out into the play area. Otherwise, we can take them and put them onto their corresponding technologies, um, thus increasing the cost of the startups. Option two is the consultants. I can take one of the consultant cards from the open display up top and put that into my HQ. If it's my first, I take a level one. Um, if it's my second, a level two. And if it's my third, a level three. I can only have one uh, consultant of each level. And there are a finite number. So in this three player game, there's two, four, six, seven total um, consultants. So not everyone is going to be able to get all three consultants. And lastly, the final action that can be done, which isn't down here in the action section, but it's the actual regions out on the board. So that's your shipping routes. So how that's gonna work is, you're gonna take uh, an agent, and unlike the other actions, um, well, majority does still matter, but unlike the other ones, the action is taken when an agent is placed on the region. So, if I take one of my agents from here and put them into, say, the Gulf region, I'm gonna take an action immediately. I'm gonna take this shipping action just by my arrival. But majority still matters. So if I'm not majority, then there's nothing I can do. I'm just kind of building myself up for the future. But in this turn, since I'm the only one there in the Gulf region, I can then choose a shipping route. And those shipping routes from the Gulf, I can either go down here to Singapore, or I can go over to Philadelphia, or up to uh, Rotterdam. There's little white arrows here that indicate that I can only ship in that direction. So example, I could not ship from, um, say, the, uh, from Nigeria over here into Singapore, just as an example. So I have to follow the white lines into the refineries. And the refineries talk about the demand of the oil field. So down here, if I were to ship from the Gulf into Singapore, they only have a demand of two. So if there were, say, three barrels here, I could only ship a maximum of two because that's the demand of the region or of the refinery. When looking at the board, um, you're also going to notice a big white, uh, you're going to notice a big number and a small number. The small number and even the small icons indicate what's on the reverse side. So here in the small is a three, on the reverse side is a three. In the small is a two, on the reverse side is a two. So this little guy here, your first action when you do it, you're gonna do one barrel from the bag. And then once you're done with your turn, it's gonna get flipped and on the other side is the two barrels. So these are constantly gonna get rotated as shipping actions occur. So once you've chosen a shipping route, then you're going to um, resolve all the actions along the shipping route on your way. So I'm gonna take these two black barrels here, and let's say I were to go down into Singapore, I would just draw one barrel from the bag, and then I would take these two into my HQ. If I went the other way, uh, this symbol indicates that I would take one of my two barrels and actually put it into the black market, thus leaving me only with one barrel along my route. Uh, and then on this one, I'm gonna draw a random from the bag, and then let's say I got two Rotterdam, then I would be able to take uh, more. Uh, there's more demand up there for me to, uh, to get more oil into my HQ. And that's it. Those are your different uh, actions. So th how the game ends, once the black bag is, um, once the final black barrel has been drawn from the bag, that triggers the sort of end game event. 
So the player that uh, triggers that peak oil, uh, they're going to flip their HQ card over to its backside. So let's say I triggered it, I'm going to flip it over, indicating that we're uh, kind of on the final uh, finishing end game. And then in turn order, uh, we're going to kind of go around and finish our turn um, one by one. So I'm going to finish, if I were ending the, uh, the game, I'm going to finish my turn as normal. So uh, I would still, say, do a step two, which is moving an agent. Then, in turn order, uh, each other player may reassign one of their agents in the end game. So we're going to then check all the action spots uh, in order, expand, develop, invest, uh, and, or, sorry, expand, develop, then the regions invest in gray ops and on each action spot each player with at least one agent will be allowed to use one option of that action so in each region if a player has uh, the majority uh, in that action spot that player is the first to use one of its options only one in this end game and then they remove their agents from that action spot thereafter or if no player has the majority starting with the player with the peak oil marker, so you know if this card were, were overturned, and then going clockwise, um, uh, each player with an agent on that action spot uh, may use one of its options as well, removing their agents afterwards. So majority starts, and then uh, the next majority, so on and so forth. If no uh, majority is there, so if it's just a, uh, a tie, um, then starting with the uh, the first player, and then going around clockwise. Okay, so that's it. That's the setup and um, explanation, very long explanation of peak oil. So we are going to go through some turns, but let me just do a quick recap. Uh, so very quickly, very uh, briefly, uh, you're going to pull out three cards, put two barrels in their location, and then draw, put those at the bottom of the deck, pull up three more, pull up three uh, corporations or startup cards. Everyone gets a headquarter card as well as a private portfolio card, one barrel and two uh, agents. General supply goes up there. Uh, you're going to draw out um, uh, players. <laughs> Sorry, you're gonna draw out the, uh, what are these guys called again? The consultants. Uh, respective to the number of players. You're going to put in the number of barrels in the bag as indicated. Uh, you're going to draw the startups. You're going to put the um, PR crisis over there, and that's your setup. And then your actions or your playthrough, uh, everyone's going to take a turn. Step one, reassign an agent or take an action. Step two, reassign an agent. And then step three, optional, pay two oil to reassign an agent. Remember, there's five, a max of five agents on any spot, here, here, or even in a region. So when you take an action, uh, the majority rules. Uh, you get to do both. If you're tied, you can only do one. Uh, when you're pulling a barrel, so you're pulling it out of the bag, if it's a black one, you're going to put it onto a spot here in the black market. Uh, if it's a red or yellow, you're going to do a PR crisis. And then uh, peak oil, when the last um, barrel gets removed, then uh, we're going to, um, to handle the end game. And then during that uh, peak oil phase for each action spot, the majority player wins, etc. And then final scoring. Uh, final scoring is each startup card, uh, including your private portfolio. You're going to get... Uh, one victory point per barrel on that technology, plus one victory point per oil field card uh, with a matching symbol that I hold. And that's it. Subtract any VPs for your PR crisis and add uh, the v add any VPs for the consultant cards, and the person with the most victory points wins. Okay, with all of that said and done, let's go through um, at least one turn, possibly two, of all the players on the board just so that we can get kind of an idea of um, what to do. So go ahead and uh, reassign these guys back out. Everyone's got their one barrel. Setup looks good. We're all set. Okay, so player one's turn. On my first turn, um, well, I can't do any action, so I'm going to go into um, an area or sorry, to an action spot, one of these four, or into a region. So my for my first action, uh, I'm going to try to get some oil cards into my hand um, 
to, to get, make uh, myself a little bit stronger by, uh, by drilling. So let's go ahead and um, for action one, uh, reassign an agent here to the develop. And for action two, let's do the same so that we can uh, strengthen our control there. Okay, player two over here, purple. They're going to um, come over here. They want to get some investment cards. Uh, they want to get that um, early on since in the beginning they are free. And then on their action two, they look like they might want to do some shipping routes. So they're going to come here into the Gulf region. Now, when you come into the uh, regions, remember, that's uh, doing an action right away. So you're assigning him and then also taking the action immediately, even if it's your second assignment. Uh, sorry, so uh, I'm going to go here and I will be able to activate that purple guy. And man, he's really tough to see on this board. Uh, I'll be able to do his action next turn if I still have control of the region. And then Green's turn, they're going to come in here and for their action one, they're going to reassign an agent to invest because they want to get some startup and technologies going as well. And then for their action two, they want to um, hmm, do a shipping route from, say, Nigeria. Okay, and so that's their first turn. Now moving on to uh, the second round, so that's it. No, uh, no barrels to pull, no craziness to, uh, to do, no PR crises to resolve. So now back to my turn. I'm gonna go ahead and drill. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an oil card as my first, as my step one of my turn. I'm gonna do the action, which is to develop, and in that develop, I'm gonna drill. And looking out here, I am going to go ahead and grab um, Libya into my hand, draw out the next one. And inside of this turn, uh, so Libya indicates that I do get a security marker, which I'm going to grab. And then I put one uh, barrel, so put this into my HQ, grab a security token into my HQ, grab the bag. I'm going to open it up and I need to grab a black barrel and I put this black barrel into Libya, like so. But then there's the second option, which is the plus question mark. So the first one is not a pull, but that second one could be. So you know what, for purposes of this demo, yes, we're gonna go ahead and pull. So drawing into the bag, feeling it out, and then grabbing one, it's a black barrel, and it goes into the region. Okay, great. That resolved my action of step one, and now my step two is I have to reassign. So I have to reassign a guy, so you know what, I'm gonna move him from here over to here so that hopefully next turn I can recruit another guy into my HQ. All right, player two, their plan was to do shipping of the Gulf region, so as their action, they're gonna go ahead and ship from the Gulf region. And to do so, they're just going to go through and uh, resolve the shipping routes as well as uh, anything else along the way. So they're going to take these two barrels, like so, and they're going to ship it down here to Singapore, which has a demand of two. So as they ship their route, uh, they're going to need to resolve this one, which is to grab out of the black bag. Okay, like so. All right, so I did manage to pull a red one. Oh boy, okay, so that means player three here, no, player two. <laughs> player two grabs a level one PR crisis into their hand, into their HQ, uh, face down. And that's it, it doesn't need to get resolved just yet. Uh, so this one gets resolved, so you flip it over, and then they arrive safely in Singapore, and then you flip over this one, and they're gonna take those two barrels into their hand, and then immediately pull their guy back into their HQ once the shipping route is complete. And then for my step two, I need to reassign. So I wanna leave him here to invest, but I have to reassign. So I'll go ahead and reassign this guy into the investment so that next turn, I can hopefully get uh, a startup into my, uh, into my hand. And then player three, let's see. Player three did get thwarted a little bit there because they wanted to do a startup technology as their action, but may no longer be able to do that. Uh, so looking around, uh, they have minority control. So purple, uh, 
blocked Green from being able to do their investment. So the only potential action at this stage is if they wanted to do a shipping uh, from Nigeria over to say up there to Rotterdam or over there to Philadelphia. Here I only need to resolve one token, there I would need to resolve two. So you know I think I might want to possibly do that but then I have to draw three from the bag which okay uh, could help or hurt the game along. But you know since this is basically the last turn that I'll do in this demo and for demo purposes, let's go ahead and do that. So for my action for player three, they're gonna take this uh, shipping route. So they're gonna ship over here. So they have to first come here, resolve three, whoops, get those two barrels there. Resolve three from the bag. So for my first one, and we pull them one at a time and resolve them one at a time. It's a black one. Okay, so the black one, always goes into the black market. Let's go ahead and put it uh, here into tidal power. Okay, number two, it's another black one. So that one uh, gets set off to the side. And then the third one, also a black one. So I've avoided any PR crises, but these, so I drew three total black ones. One goes into the black market and the other two Per the uh, the rules of you know pulling from the bag, they go back into the bag. Then I'm going to complete my shipping route here to Rotterdam. Pull these two barrels into my hand along with my guy, and then flip these tokens over like so. And then I need to reassign an agent. So I'm going to also take my agent from here and do back to purple what they had done to me. So there's going to be a tie control, so they won't be able to do two on their next turn. So anyway, guys, uh, this kind of setup and playthrough did get a little bit long, but thanks for sticking with it. There's a lot happening in this game, but as you can see, once it gets moving, it gets moving um, pretty, pretty nicely. So anyway, guys, I'm going to break down the table. Uh, stay tuned for my afterthoughts. Hey, guys, thanks for joining me for that setup and playthrough of Peak Oil a game released in 2017 for two to five players. Um, its cost right now is roughly uh, $30 to $50. Um, harder to find though, as it happens. So let me talk, I guess, a little bit about the components. So the components of this game are, I did a, um, I think I did a play, or sorry, an open boxing of this game not too long ago. And the initial impression of the components were, were pretty decent. But as after playing the game, while I really like the linen finish on the cards, the stock was actually very uh, thin and flimsy. So as I went to go shuffle some of the cards, like they were very bendable, um, almost to the point to where it would leave creases. So that w was kind of a, a drawback of that. Otherwise, the, uh, the board itself, the, ma the master board, was pretty good, really solid. Artwork, um, while being plain and straightforward, still pretty decent. The oil cubes for the uh, the oil drums was pretty nice. The bag was of good quality. So other than the card stock, ultimately the components of the game were, you know, definitely a fair value. So the theme, I think that the theme integration obviously was integrated very well. Uh, some people who are really good with geography might notice that um, some of the locations were a little off uh, on where they might otherwise fall in real life, especially with some of the shipping routes that were indicated on the game. But definitely setting that part aside for um, realism, because again, you know, this is set in a somewhat fictitious scenario. Uh, the, uh, the theme of the game, uh, while being a part of the type of game it is, definitely makes sense. And the artwork uh, really was, uh, was nice, um, somewhat professional, yet kind of ominous about, oh no, you know, what happens if the oil resources do uh, end up, uh, you know, going empty. This game is probably for um, the type of players, I'd say, a, a medium to a more hardcore style player. Um, it's definitely not an entry level or a casual player style game. Reason being is because you know the setup is uh, pretty involved. 
a lot of little components happening and the rule variations do change when you're playing with two or three players versus four or five. So you gotta remember to pull certain cards out, uh, put certain things up in a certain way. Um, on the initial setup, when you're drawing out um, a certain number of cards for the number of players to set up the oil fields, it's different from then the three uh, oil field cards that get put out onto the table. So a lot of, uh, a lot of little nuances to the game and then during the playing of the game, you know, there's there's definitely some strategy involved for anticipating your turn and what your opponents might do. So in terms of, um, you know, the type of player that would be interested in this one, I put it into the more medium to heavyweight type of game. Replayability. Definitely high on the replayability though, because you're constantly shuffling in cards, um, when you're doing the shipping routes and other things that happen, you're flipping over the tokens. So there's ever-changing elements to the game which do add to that replayability. So I'd give the replayability of this one um, definitely a, a factor of high because there's a lot of randomness going on and a lot of different things that can happen, especially uh, the length of the game because when you're going through, you could pull out you know, a black oil cube almost every time, but you could also get hit with a lot of reds in a row. Uh, so I guess um, reasons why you might wanna add this into your collection, um, it's a very solid, albeit maybe um, too complicated, especially with the rule book, um, area control resource management style of game. And I say area control because you're not able to do actions unless you're the majority uh, person with your agents in those locations. So you need to have those agents there in order to do it. And you're also kind of managing your oil resources at the same time because you also need to um, balance risk and reward. Do you risk shipping lanes for potentially uh, losing half of your oil if you pull out a, uh, a red barrel? Things like that. Uh, reasons why you may not want to add it into your collection? Because you're looking for a more casual, lighter fare type of game. Um, there are definitely easier uh, area control style games out there. So this one is, like I said, more on the uh, complex side of uh, the genre. But thematically and everything, it does make sense and is a lot of fun to play. Um, so my personal thoughts though, while going through it, um, as I mentioned a moment ago, you know, I'm really happy that I backed this Kickstarter back in 2017. I'm a little mad at myself that I'm just getting it to the table, uh, but that's gonna be the case with a lot of these as you'll come to find. Um, the only, I guess, thing that I didn't care for while going through the game was um, because you're always putting the red uh, oil barrels back into the bag, it can kind of prolong the game unnecessarily because um, if there's, say, one black oil uh, and five red ones still in that bag or three depending on the number of players, um, you know, that's a one, that's a 25% chance or a 75% chance that the game is not going to end on that turn. And you could constantly, you know, go through the game and just pluck out red barrels after red barrels. And that's the randomness to the game. So I feel like there should have been some mechanic as the black barrels got towards the end that could still somewhat balance and expedite the end game scenario. Small gripe, and I guess my only other gripe about the game is the, the fucking box. Oh man, you guys will find that I, I gripe about the inserts in the box and things like that uh, in a lot of my videos, but this one, again, it's a needless use of space and I get why they do it because you know there's uh, production costs involved with uh, punch boards and things like that are usually of a set size. Um, something like this has to sit on the shelf in a certain way, I get that but there's so much air in there. There's no inserts so the cards are just, you know, flying around and I always gotta kinda figure out where they go. So I like box organization, as you guys know. So those are, uh, those are my thoughts. Um, if you guys have any comments, leave them down in the uh, comment section below. Um, if you like uh, the content, please leave a like and subscribe. I definitely appreciate the support. Um, and I guess until next time, guys, thanks for watching.